In this lesson, we're going to quickly look at state machines. A state machine is essentially a method for sequencing code. At the heart of all state machines is a basic structure consisting of a case structure and a while loop. Essentially, the loop runs over and over again each time selecting a certain section of code using the case structure. Let's begin by making a simple state machine program. Our program will take an audio input, apply a filter, and output it to the MyDAC. It will use the digital inputs to switch between four options, or states low pass, high pass, band pass, and no filter. We'll start off with our basic state machine architecture. First, place a case structure and drag a while loop over it. Create a stop button on the conditional terminal. Now we'll create tasks using the DAC assistant for audio input, audio output, and digital input. We can find the DAC assistant in the Express palette or by using the Quick Drop menu. When we place the assistant on the block diagram, a wizard will open. This is where we will configure our DAC task. For our first task, select Acquire Signals. We'll be acquiring an audio signal, so select Voltage from the drop list. The next menu is where we select the channels we want to acquire from. In our case, we want to acquire the left and right audio input channels. We can select both channels by holding down the control or shift keys while clicking. Once our task has been created, the configuration menu will open. Here we need to change our signal input range to plus minus 2 volts. Then in our timing settings, we'll set our acquisition mode to continuous. We'll set our samples to read to 10,000 samples and our sample rate to 100,000 Hz. When we click OK, our DAC task is finalized. Now we'll set up our output task. Drop another DAC assistant on the block diagram, and this time select Generate Signals from the first menu. Again we'll select the left and right audio channels from our MyDAC device as our output channels. We must configure our signal output range to match our device channels, so again we'll set these to plus minus 2 volts. Set the generation mode in the timing settings for continuous samples and click OK to finalize this task. Finally, we'll create our digital task. Drop another DAC assistant onto the block diagram. Expand the acquire signals and select digital input. Select line input. On the configuration menu, we'll expand our MyDAC device and select all the digital lines by holding down the control or shift keys while clicking the mouse. To configure our task, select all the lines in the channel settings list and check the invert line box. Click OK to finalize our task. We want our first case, or state, to be no filter. In this case, or state, no filter would be applied to the signal so we can just wire through our waveform signal. Create two graph indicators on the audio data wire, one before the case structure and one after it. This will allow us to visually compare how the filters affect our signals. We know that if we get a high signal from any digital input line, we want to go to the next state, which is low pass. Otherwise, stay the same. We can do this by using another case structure but instead let's use the select function to keep our code simple. Open the string subpalette or the quick drop menu and place a string constant next to the true input of the select function. Type in the words low pass and wire its output to the true input of the select function. Now we will connect the data output of the digital in DAC VI to the input of the or array elements function. Just a reminder that we want the program to change filters or states whenever one of the digital lines is brought to ground. In order to achieve this, we combine the multiple digital lines with an OR array function. The output of that function will then be connected to the selection terminal of the select function inside the case structure. But what would be wired to the false terminal and where would the output go? Since we want the output to be the case that runs on the next loop iteration, we need a way of remembering what the output was in the previous iteration of our loop. The best way in LabVIEW to remember anything within a loop structure is to use a shift register. 
Let's create one by right-clicking on the while loop and selecting Add Shift Register. Now let's wire the output of our select function through the select case structure and into the shift register. Just a reminder that what we're trying to achieve with this code is that the program will stay in a certain state until either the stop button is pressed or a digital signal occurs. The shift register is going to determine the next case selected in our case select structure, so we need to wire it to the selection terminal. And here, if the result of the Boolean OR is false, then we want to stay in our current state. The best way to ensure this happens is to connect the output from the shift register back into the false case of the select function so that it returns to the right side of the shift register. We also want our code to start in the no filter case. So let's initialize our shift register by right clicking on the left terminal and creating a constant. Type no filter in this constant. Since this will be the default case of our case structure, Type a comma after the word no filter and type in the word default. Let's create an indicator so we can see which case is being selected. Right click on the wire before the case selector terminal and create an indicator. Now we need a way to create the other cases or states for our program. A quick way of creating similar cases is to right click on the case select structure and click on the selection duplicate case. This will create an additional case selection with all of the code from your original case. Type the word low pass into the selector label. We will create our low pass filter in this case. First, delete the data wire passing through the case. Now bring up the quick drop menu and type filter. Drop the express VI into the case structure to open the configuration menu. The filtering type should be low pass by default with a cutoff frequency of 100 Hz. This is fine. Click OK to accept the settings. Now connect the input tunnel of the case to the signal input of the filter VI and connect the filtered signal output of the filter VI to the output tunnel of the case. Because our next case or state will be the high pass state, change the text in the constant wired to the select function to say high pass. Let's duplicate this case now and call the new one high pass. Double click on the filter VI to bring up the configuration menu. Change the filtering type to high pass. Let's also change the cutoff frequency to 1000 Hz. Click OK to close the menu and accept the changes. Again, we need to send our code to the next state when we get our digital signal. So change the text in the string constant wired to the select function to say band pass. Let's duplicate our case once again. Name this case band pass and double click on the filter VI and change the filter type to band pass. Change the cutoff frequency to 100 Hz and click OK to close the menu. Now we need to change the text in the string constant wired to our select function to no filter. This will send our case back to the default state when this case executes. Delete the false case as it is no longer needed. Switch to the front panel and click the run arrow to start the code. Touch the open end of the wire connected to the digital ground on the MyDAC to one of the digital inputs. This will change the state of our program and apply the filters we have created to the audio signal we are acquiring. Observe the way the filtered signal looks and sounds compared to the unfiltered signal. In this lesson we learned about state machines. We learned that a state machine is a method of sequencing code. We use this architecture to create an audio filter program with four possible filters implemented in four different states.